It's a small world. After all, just here for you. Nuba is a friend. It's no secret Disney and other theme parks intentionally use music to enhance the guest experience. The infectious sounds of It's a Small World or Walt Disney's Enchanted Tiki Room surely stick with guests long after their visit. What may be more of a secret is how Disney and other theme parks have mastered the art of sound design. Beyond catchy earworms, theme park music has a way of reaching our emotions. I have to admit, the iconic castle in the background of your family photo is probably what guests remember most from theme parks. However, sights are only part of the equation. When combined with impactful soundscapes, the overall theme park experience can go from amusing to downright meaningful. I would argue music adds just as much to the magic and wonder of theme parks as any other medium. Soundtracks provide an extra push that can rouse powerful emotions or simply make the hair on the back of your neck stand up. Welcome to Sensing Theme Parks, a series exploring the wonders of theme park design for the five human senses. This is the art of music and sound design in theme parks. Creating soundscapes for a theme park is much different than doing so for a movie. Film directors and composers have the advantage of controlling exactly what the viewer sees and hears in a specific moment. The music can swell for a grandiose climax, or pull back the dynamics for an emotionally striking scene. Directors and composers meticulously frame the movie, so pretty much everyone in the audience will more or less have an identical viewing experience. Amusement parks are themed environments where guests are essentially their own directors. Unlike moviegoers, theme park guests have the freedom to look around and take in the environment as they please. This means every single guest may have a completely different experience than the person right next to them. They walk at a different pace, take different routes, take on the attractions in a different order, and so on and so forth. As you might expect, theme park designers are very aware of this. They designed themed spaces and controlled the audio with this in mind. It takes a different form of storytelling to shape a theme park, and it takes a different form of music composition to score or design a theme park soundtrack. In the early days of Disneyland, music around the park wasn't quite what it is today. Occasional speakers here and there, usually at the entrance of different lands, played short music loops to set the tone. Actually, live musicians filled in the rest of the park with music, while some e-ticket ride queues had short audio loops. Pre-recorded music eventually trickled in throughout the park, mainly thanks to legendary announcer Jack Wagner, known as the voice of Disneyland. Welcome to the Magic Kingdom of Disneyland. Using his knowledge and background in public broadcasting, Wagner curated songs that fit the theme and time period of the lands. This thoughtful approach transported guests from reality into a themed environment with the simple switch of a tune. That's the difference good theme park music can make. Wagner's work, in a way, served as the foundation for the future of theme park music, a foundation that castles would be built on. As time went on, theme park music became just as customized as the lands themselves. After decades of masterful creations, 
theme parks today have music woven throughout their sprawling lands. Soundtracks are tightly knit into the colorful quilts that are theme parks. Designers are cognizant of what type of music to play, when, and where. Music is carefully selected and created to set the pace of your day around the park. Take entrance areas for example. That's where pretty much every guest will start their day. The welcoming sounds caffeinate guests for a day of magic ahead. Spirited music plays as you march down Main Street, USA. With a map in hand and optimism in your eyes, gazing at the castle and attractions in the distance. These songs inspire guests ahead of a day they'll likely remember for the rest of their lives. It's almost like the title sequence of a movie or the first level of a video game. In the case of Universal Islands of Adventure, guests pass through the gates of Port of Entry, leaving the real world behind and entering a world of fantasy. The music swoons guests in with its tranquil tones. The world instruments paint an intriguing feeling that piques curiosity and sparks a call to adventure. Stirring sounds soak over the land early in the morning. The closer you get to the thrills, the chords turn into a rich refrain. The gallant tune is always in a state of opening every few measures, so no matter when you step into the land, you feel like you've arrived at the perfect moment. This is the handiwork of composer William Kidd, and it gives me goosebumps every time. Islands of Adventure isn't the only theme park with gripping entrance music. Take the retro-futuristic tones of Epcot, for example, or the movie-quality inviting music of Efteling in the Netherlands. I can't possibly mention every perfectly composed example out there, but the best ones all accomplish the same goal of placing you in a fairy tale brought to life. Music is what evokes that special spark of realizing you're actually there and the rides you love are a moment away. The adventure begins. In the different lands around the park, the music may grow more tense, serene, or joyous. on the mood of the story around you. The big, beautiful, cheery synths of Tomorrowland star in the area's astronomical feel. The melodious marimbas of Adventureland establish an enthusiasm for exploration. These area loops and so many more pair with the visuals and thrills melding the story together. The story can move with you too, as guests wander from land to land. Guests exploring Seuss Landing at Islands of Adventure will hear a silly symphony of wacky jingles. But just across the bridge to the Lost Continent, a wash of wind chimes soften the stern contrast. There's no bleed over of the Dr. Seuss song clashing with the next. Imposing trumpets blare a melody with the statue of a fierce griffin watching over the land's entrance. As you turn the corner to discover a mythical world, the suspense takes a back seat and soft flutes take over. They sing the exact same melody the trumpets just played, now over the calm rhythm of a tambourine. The music sweetly and seamlessly transitions, all in the spirit of the journey taking place. Well-placed music adds depth to each moment during your theme park visit. It goes beyond the busy midways and of course extends into attractions too. The Haunted Mansion captivates with its clever and evolving soundtrack. 
Faraway bells chime in unison with a passing hollow wind, revealing the chilling melody. Guided by the iconic narration of Paul Frees as the ghost host, guests pass through the mansion's haunted hallways, and the eerie music reinforces the compounding melody. The refrain pulses into the ballroom. Notice how the same melody keeps growing. Eventually, the music morphs into a soulful swing with the mansion's happy haunts around the graveyard. The Haunted Mansion's music, composed by Buddy Baker, adds a layer to the atmosphere, creating a feeling that's empty with dread and full with delight. The timeless art of music is part of what keeps the Haunted Mansion a world-class attraction after all these years. And its progression is an example of theme parks knowing exactly what music to play, when and where. The whimsical changing of instruments and uptick in tempo set the attraction's pace just as much as the actual ride system does. This concept has been used many times. The concept of overlapping and expanding music as guests pass through the entirety of an attraction. At Six Flags Over Georgia, composer Dick Hamilton introduced the Monster Mansion theme with a simple ragtime piano. Once the doors swing open, the song grows into a massive Dixieland number. The ongoing sing-along of It's a Small World by the Sherman Brothers rotates through different languages and instruments. Sonically, the song adapts to the cultures throughout the ride, all while clinging to the unforgettable melody of the happiest cruise that ever sailed around the world. Moving on, George Bruns intertwined the Yoho chorus throughout Pirates of the Caribbean. The overture in the queue taps into the tune. The swashbuckling sonnet transforms deeper into the attraction. Plus, I just love this little dog barking in rhythm and filling in the gaps of the shanty. It sounds like you're passing right by the little pup. And let me explain why. The sound design of Pirates of the Caribbean has a bit more depth than a really good soundtrack. That's because the 100 plus animatronics are accompanied by a number of audio tracks coming through appropriately placed individual speakers. The location based sounds of shouting pirates in their chaos is heard from all directions, unifying sight and sound as a dynamic sensation. The stereo sound makes guests believe they're in the middle of the action. Disney took complete control of the ride's acoustics. Pirates of the Caribbean, as well as many other rides, take advantage of the physical venue guests navigate through. To refer back to cinema, movies are a medium in that sound is mixed for various theaters or home releases. The sound of theme park rides is mixed for a specific venue, which comes with many challenges and opportunities. Emphatic soundtracks truly elevate an attraction. A compelling yet melancholy arrangement like Space Mountain's Star Tunnel by George Wilkins almost seems like it's floating. And it puts guests at ease before their turbulent space expedition. Speaking of Space Mountain, the custom sci-fi score by Michael Giacchino without a doubt propels the coaster out in Disneyland. Or how about the driving arpeggios of the station music for Millennium Force at Cedar Point? 
pulsing pad builds anticipation before you climb 300 feet in the sky. The soundtrack of Disney Soarin' by Jerry Goldsmith and later Bruce Broughton is enough by itself to make you feel like you're taking flight. Again, I can't possibly bring up every example, especially since there's so many parks and attractions I haven't personally experienced. But so many scores exemplify the sentimental side of theme park magic. Theme park music can be designed to strike an emotional chord. Familiar yet new music triggers nostalgia with a surprise. Some songs call back to universally beloved soundtracks, adding adventure to a well-known tune. The progression of sound design also may be used to tug on your heartstrings. Avatar Flight of Passage at Disney's Animal Kingdom starts off with a gratifying score from the film. As guests make their way through the queue, the audio becomes more narrow with sound effects and eventually becomes somewhat sterile. Guests may not notice the gradual shift in audio as it naturally flows with the environment, but just as the soundtrack was quietly pulled away in the queue, the emotive score explodes once the ride begins. Guests in line are lulled with the absence of music and then pulled right back in with a burst of harmonies. It's hard to keep your emotions in check in a moment like that. That's the heart of what storytelling and theme parks are all about. This push of excitement through careful dynamics is the type of earned impact that can stay with you for a lifetime. Crawling compositions are only part of the equation. A symphony of sound effects add more texture. You can't talk about sound effects without mentioning a pioneer in this field, Jimmy McDonald. He worked as Disney's Foley artist for decades and laid the groundwork for the craft. In the parks, sound effects are a level of detail that punctuate top-tier storytelling. They emulate environments, turning make-believe into real life. Disney's Animal Kingdom breathes with its encompassing world-building sound effects. Port of Entry feels lived in, with its distant soundscape of piped-in chatter and calamity, as if you've stepped into a real town with residents going about their daily lives. In Diagon Alley, the rumbling train above is convincing amid the animated wizarding world. These audio touches seem real when there's no speaker in sight. Disney and other theme parks are purposeful when hiding speakers. They might be built into the rock work, disguised as a window, or hidden in a variety of many other ways. You never know. The only time you'll see an actual speaker in Disney is when it fits the story. Otherwise, a speaker in plain sight would break the narrative. Also, there are natural sound effects that fill the air. The actual roar of a roller coaster zooming by can stimulate adrenaline, not to mention a train full of screaming riders. Speaking of, the exaggerated screams from atop the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror put guests in a certain dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. Pandora the World of Avatar may be the best example of masterful sound effects in a theme park. This land creates a jungle that could never exist on Earth, built with the ever-changing lush sounds of wildlife. Similar to how entrance areas start your day on a high note, the audio in Pandora is designed to adapt throughout the day. The ambient sounds of nature subtly change throughout different points in the day, from the rush of the early morning, to the bustle of the afternoon, and to the restful glow of nighttime. The fresh sounds early on are different than the nocturnal activity after dusk. Pandora is a class example of how theme park audio matches the time of day. It's designed to amplify the excitement of getting up early to get on some rides, as well as the fulfillment of walking to the exit after a perfect day. It's all part of the adventure. 
a lot of theme parks offer one final magical experience just before closing. Nighttime shows. They're all unique and spectacular in many ways, but music is where nighttime shows really excel. It gives guests a chance to pause and breathe. The wonder of sparkling lights against the backdrop of a dark sky mean much more when paired with music. The soundtrack is usually cinematic, recapturing the movies and stories you've known your entire life, no matter how young or old. In that moment of reflection, the music is doing its job to make sure everyone leaves on a positive note. Theme parks are a hub for inspiration and creativity. They plant seeds of optimism you can come back to time and time again. The power of music in these special places can shroud the hardships of life, even if only for a moment. It's at these escapes where emotional connections can be formed, and music adds just another layer of depth. Listening to theme park music on a regular day when you're miles away can feel like a warm blanket. It's like being wrapped in the comforts of yesterday's sunshine, but those moments are never too far away from the heart with the connection of music. Nothing can ever replace lifelong memories with family, especially with those who have passed on, but music can help us hold on to those old memories, the ones we can never recreate, and the ones we never expected to experience. It's all thanks to music and those who made it possible. Special thanks to those who have reported on this topic, and a special thanks to all the Storybook Amusement patrons. Shout out to the producer credits, Parallel Disney and Nick E. Join today at patreon.com slash storybookamusement for early access and other perks. Support the channel and grab some theme park inspired hats and tees at storybookamusement.com. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and consider subscribing if you'd like to see more. Thanks everyone for watching.